my read. Now, there have been some pretty trying events on your watch in the year and a bit since you have been president, and uh, one of them occurred in California, and we have a young lady here this morning. Hi, Annie. You, you're getting tired, aren't you? No, you're not? Oh, good. Great. I want the president to take a look at the television monitor here so he knows a little bit more about you. This home video of Polly, taken last summer, shows the outgoing 12-year-old who aspires to be an actress. Her mother released the tape day in hopes it would help in the search for her missing daughter, kidnapped at knife point from her own bedroom in Petaluma one week ago. I felt very bad when Polly was kidnapped. Once my cat died and I said when Polly was stolen, you, can't get, you can get another cat, but you can't get another sister. I used to like to go for walks with my dog, but now I don't like to do that anymore because I don't feel very safe. I'm starting to get s sort of scared because there's so many bad people out on the streets. I don't like to go to bed alone because like, you can't see very well in the dark and so like anybody can just jump up behind anything and you can't see anything and then they just grab you. I like to put a lot of ropes around here and bells because they're like alarms. These are my bells that goes on my door and this rope right here is for a bad guy. At night when they come in, they go like this. This night light is also something that's good. See, if you come near it, it flashes on. This is my guardian angel right here. It's a picture of Polly looking down to us on the clouds. Well, of course, that is Annie Nickel, who is the sister of Polly Class, or as you know, was kidnapped in Northern California. It became enormous news in the country. We asked Annie to come partly because she wanted to, but partly because when we talk to kids around the country, enormous numbers of them are concerned about their safety. So, Annie, where you go? Well, the other day when I was on the plane coming here, I asked my mom, do you think I'm going to live to grow up? And my sister Polly didn't live to grow up, so I didn't feel that safe. And my question is that I, I just don't feel very safe and I want America to be safer for children. And you think the president could do something, don't you? I agree. I think I could. Let me say, first of all, you're a brave girl to come here and let us see your story. Um, as you probably know, I, I talked to some of your family members, uh, and I'm doing what I can to change some laws and let's talk about it a little bit. First of all, there are people who get paroled out of prison who have serious problems and who are very likely to repeat them who should not be released. That's one thing that your sister's case has made people sensitive to. And that's why we're working on some laws to identify people who are serious threats to society who will likely repeat their crimes and not let them out. The second thing we have to do is to try to make our, our communities and our streets safer. That's why I'm trying to pass a bill to take these assault weapons off the street and to put more police officers on the street to make the streets safer. And then there's a lot of violence against children that occur in their own homes from family members and in schools. And we, we are trying to start programs now all across America where people learn to resolve their differences in nonviolent ways, to stop hurting each other and shooting each other and acting on impulse. You do live in a country that's too dangerous, and we have to make it less dangerous. And it is a huge, a huge obligation that I feel, and I think about it every day. You know, I have a little girl, too. I, I want the children of this country to be able to grow up on safe streets and safe schools and safer homes. And I think that there are some very specific things we can all do about it. We also need to change our attitudes. I, you may see pretty soon a public service announcement I did with a young woman from Washington, D.C., a 14-year-old girl named Alicia Brown. She went to the sixth funeral of a friend of hers just yesterday. Six of her friends have been shot. And so we did this public service announcement together. It's going to be on television. 
talking to young people and asking them to help us turn America away from violence. When you were young, Mr. President, do you ever remember being in a room with kids and people asked you if you felt safe? Never. No. And yeah, when I was a kid, you know, people beat each other up. I mean, that's the only thing you ever worried about was some body coming up to you on the street or in an alley or something and jumping you and beating you up. Nobody ever shot anybody. There were no, none of this, I mean, to speak of. There was very little of this. And the kidnapping's the kind of thing that happened to your sister. Much more rare then. It's much worse today. What do you think, Annie? Well, um, for one thing that I think is that I, I think that other people shouldn't be released from jail and they shouldn't be stealing as much children as they have been stealing. I was looking at some figures. 4,600 kids were abducted last year. That stuff you put in your bedroom, did you really feel the need for that? I did feel the need. Did it make you feel better when you did it, that you were taking charge of your life and you were trying to protect yourself? You think the president's on the right track, though? I think so. I'll try, Annie. I, I, I think about your sister and the children like her all the time. I'm working hard on it. Okay, let's go over here. Thanks, Annie, my dear.